good, everybody? Welcome to an Epic My Damn Toys video tonight. I have your WWE Clash of Champions 2020 full show review and results for you guys. As you guys probably know by now, we're going to run through the entire WWE Clash of Champions 2020 match card and break down all of the action that took place tonight at Clash of Champions. Coming into this show, there were a few matches that I was very much looking forward to, and then you had some matches that I was like, eh, is it going to be that good, Brad? We're going to find out together. Now, usually when I'm coming in and the match card isn't that stacked, it ends up being a lot better show than I expected. And I, I swear, I feel like I say that a lot on these reviews, but it's true. It's just the, it's the cold, hard facts. If I go into a show expecting, like, the best thing ever, it usually lets me down. And then the opposite, if I don't give it any expectations, which I guess I should just learn to do that with every show. But anyways, guys, we had a good story coming in here with a lot of these matches, some great matches on the card. Let's find out if it was any good or not. Was it a fantastic show? Was it a terrible show? Was it somewhere in between? Let's find out together as we break down Clash of Champions 2020. And I give you all my personal thoughts and opinions on the matches, the outcome comes the results the matches themselves where we go from here what i expect to happen am i happy with the results let's shut the hell up and dive into clash of champions 2020 and find the hell out all right guys so starting out first with the kickoff show we did have the smackdown tag team championship match between cesaro and shinsuke nakamura taking on the lucha house party now coming in i didn't think that the quality like you know the the prestige of this matchup was very big but i knew that all four of these men whoever competed for lucha house party would put on a damn banger and they did i i think i think this match was very fun it was enjoyable. It was high. You know, the, the strong style and the hard-hitting impact style of Shinsuke and Cesaro put together with the Luchador, the high-flying ability, the athletic ability of the Lucha House Party. I knew this match was going to be very fire and low-key, and it it damn delivered, man. They were all over the ring. By the way, Kalisto was rocking a fire white glove, white mask, white attire. Lince Dorado was looking good as well. Great athleticism, great back and forth, great sequences between both teams. Cesaro and Shinsuke have now put it together. I don't know if I've ever seen this before from them. I know I did it in the pick fed in the Royal Rumble. Cesaro did the Cesaro swing and then Kenny Omega hit Bray Wyatt with a, a V trigger off of it kind of like you know giving it momentum and then a freaking V trigger and then they did that spot in this match and I guess that's going to be their finisher moving forward. It's the Cesaro swing into the Kinshasa. They do that to Kalisto. One, two, three. Shinsuke and Cesaro do retain which I do agree with. I said that that should be the case. I think they're great as a tag team. You can put Cesaro with anybody man's damn fantastic tag team wrestler. Lucha House Party delivered Shinsuke delivered. I enjoyed this matchup. Great way to open up the kickoff. It delivered in every every aspect, for me at least. Just some fun sequences. Any wrestling fan should have appreciated this football game. But Shinsuke and Cesaro do retain their titles, and I definitely agree with this one. Great little football game. So starting off with the main show, guys, we started it all off with the match that I was probably the most looking forward to. The Triple Threat Intercontinental Championship ladder match between the champion Jeff Hardy, the self-proclaimed you know, never lost it champion Sami Zayn, and AJ Styles. I mean, this this coming in was a matchup that everyone was probably the most looking forward to just, just because of the names in this matchup. I mean, look at it. It looks like something that somebody would fantasy book. It looks like a pick-fed match. It looks like a matchup that you would draw up in your fantasy booking dreams. This looks like a WWE 2K matchup. So coming in, I was super excited. In this matchup, bro, th this matchup was nuts, okay? I will say, starting off, you know, it wasn't anything like spectacular as far as like in-ring wise, but just the spots and the creativity in this match was off the charts for sure. I thoroughly enjoyed this matchup. If you guys missed this match, you definitely got to go back and watch it. Sami Zayn did a great job in this matchup of playing the role as the crazy heel, willing to do anything it takes to win. Jeff Hardy being the sympathetic crazy man. AJ Styles doing his thing as well. At one point in this match, Jeff Hardy bailed off of one ladder to the outside, threw another ladder to Sami Zayn on the outside as he does. Swanton Bomb, absolutely craziness. Sami Zayn would handcuff Jeff Hardy's earlobe. He took the handcuffs, ran it through the gauge hole of Jeff Hardy's ear handcuffed him to a ladder so he couldn't move. It looked gross as hell. I was just freaking my skin was crawling, bro. He would then handcuff himself to AJ Styles. At one point, AJ Styles took a mini ladder and threw it from the outside of the ring and knocked off Sami Zayn, using it as a projectile to launch Sami Zayn off the ladder. I mean, bro, this thing was creative. Jeff Hardy taking just ridiculous spills to the outside. Guys, if you missed this match, you definitely gotta go check it out. I had a ton of fun watching this. This is why we love wrestling right here, man. This is why we love wrestling. The craziness and the unexpectedness. This, this is what Jeff Hardy has got to be up there for everybody's favorites. But at the end of the matchup, guys, Sami Zayn and AJ Styles were handcuffed together, so AJ Styles had to load Sami Zayn up in like a fireman's carry and climb the ladder to try to retrieve the Intercontinental Championship. They had two versions of it, or the same version, but two copies of the championship above the ring because Sami Zayn was like, you know, I'm champion and Jeff is obviously like, I'm champion. So as he's climbing up the ladder, Jeff Hardy's trying to get back in the ring while holding the ladder because he, you know, remember, it's handcuffed to his ear, so if he moves without 
out and it's going to rip his ear in half. So while AJ Styles is battling with Jeff Hardy, Sami Zayn unhooks himself with the key to the handcuff, hooks AJ Styles to the ladder, climbs up, claims both championships, and wins the Intercontinental Championship. Very creative ending, very creative booking in this matchup. Sami Zayn is a very hot heel right now, and I don't necessarily disagree with the decision. While I would have definitely enjoyed Jeff Hardy retaining, I think this is a good move. I hate that, you know, they're talking about redemption for Jeff Hardy and he still loses here, but damn, bro, you gotta be impressed with that match. That, that was fun stuff. Sami Zayn's your champion. I think he's gonna do great in this role. He makes me hate him. I miss babyface Sami Zayn so much, but I gotta say his heel character is fantastic, and this was just great stuff, bro. If you missed it, you gotta go check it out. Jeff Hardy loses the Intercontinental Championship to Sami Zayn, so we gotta crown him, but damn, man, what a football game. Definitely go check that out. Sami Zayn regains, or it says he didn't regain it because he never lost it in an interview on the stage after the match, but damn, bro. That was pretty good-ish right there. Sami Zayn is your Intercontinental Champion officially after winning the ladder match. Our next matchup was the Raw Women's Championship match between Asuka and Zelina Vega, a matchup that I really wasn't looking forward to because I do not see Zelina Vega in a competitive aspect for the Raw Women's Championship, especially going up with Asuka, guys. I felt like, you know, she, she kills it in the manager role. I think she's a fantastic manager. She is improving every time I see her in the ring, and you can tell that she's training and doing her best to get better, but I still just don't think she was ready for this matchup, so I wasn't intrigued by the matchup. I wasn't invested in the matchup. I was going to it thinking, you know, Asuka probably needs to just squash her and get on with it. It was more competitive than I thought, and she she did some decent things. It was nothing special outside of maybe a Raw TV match. I'd give that for the ceiling of the matchup. Definitely not a pay-per-view worthy matchup, and I don't know. I felt like she got a lot of offense, and she got some near two counts as well. I mean, I guess you're just trying to make it intriguing at some aspect, but I never bought it. You know, I never really felt like she had it, but Asuka does indeed lock in the Asuka lock and take care of Zelina Vega just like she should, and that is it. Asuka retains the Raw Women's Championship. I agree with this, and uh, I, I don't know where we're going. Next up was our United States Championship match between the Hurt Business's United States Champion, Bobby Lashley, MVP in his corner, taking on the former U.S. Champion in Apollo Crews, and Ricochet was in his corner. This matchup really wasn't all that special. You know, we have seen these guys score off. I feel like I've seen this match so many times before. You know, both men are athletic, both men are big. Both men can get things done in the ring, no doubt, but this one just didn't do it for me. You had a little bit of decent stuff here and there, but it's clear and clear, cutthroat that Apollo Crews is going back down the totem pole. I figured this would happen after he lost the U.S. Championship because I don't know where you go from here. I thought what he had going was great, but it's apparent that WWE did not want to continue with that, and so here he goes in another loss to Bobby Lashley here. He locked in the full Nelson on Apollo Crews and defeated him, and that's just sad, man. I hate to see it for Apollo, but I knew it would happen once you had the Hurt Business form and the, the top heel faction on Monday Night Raw. I mean, I don't know what else you can do with him. Right now, going to battle, and I don't know, man. That, that was it. Bobby Lashley retains, and I guess we're probably going to get a new challenger after this because it was pretty much a clean victory from what I saw. At least I'm pretty sure it was. But yeah, Bobby Lashley retains the U.S. title, and you know, it, it, it wasn't the greatest match, but I'm excited to see where the U.S. title goes from here, who's the next challenger, and so on and so forth. Next up, guys, we had a controversial one. We had the Raw Tag Team Championship match between the Street Profits taking on Andrade and Angel Garza. So in this matchup, you know, it's typical. It's your typical stuff, you know? I mean, both of these teams are pretty good. I don't think... I'm not the biggest fan. Like, I think Andrade and Angel Garza go together. I just am not a big fan of them as a tag team. Very weird. I know. I don't know. It's just the Raw Tag Team division is just garbage. So the Street Profits and them did their thing. I mean, they may have been a little bit better than an average Raw match. You have some good high-flying here. Uh, athletic Athleticism on display. The end of the matchup is where the whole story goes because at the end of the matchup, Angelo gets a big slam on, I think it was Garza. It might actually, no, I think it was Andrade. Slams Andrade, goes for the cover. One, two, you can clear his day, see Andrade get his shoulder up, but the ref calls three. The crowd said three, like the audio. You know, they key in the audio because of the Thunderdome. They key in the three audio, the bell rings, and the Street Profits music plays, and the match is over. They do a replay and everything, and clear his day. Andrade got his shoulder up. I guess we're going to continue continue this. That's the whole point of them, you know, continuing this thing is because we are getting another matchup between the teams. But I don't know how I like this booking. I, I don't know. I, I guess you're just trying to extend this because you have no other Raw tag teams to compete for the championships. So you're just going to extend this a little bit more with Andrade and Garza. I don't know. I was I was super confused there for a second. I was like, did they botch it? I don't even know. It may have been a botch. I'm not exactly sure, but the, the arena played the audio. The ref, the, the bell rang. I didn't even see the ref call for the bell. It just kind of rang and that was it. And, and they, they just went on with it. So I don't know what the hell's going on, but the Street Profits remain your Raw Tag Team Champions. 
Next up, guys, was the SmackDown Women's Championship match, but it was revealed to us earlier in the night that Nikki Cross, Nia Jax, and Shayna Baszler would not be able to compete tonight, so their all matches were canceled. So Bailey comes out there with a championship. She's talking trash how she always does, you know, gimmick character for Bailey in her SmackDown title run. So basically, it's kind of an open challenge. I don't think she challenged anybody. I, I don't remember her challenge. She may have challenged somebody, but anyways, out comes the Raw Women's Champion Asuka. You guys can clearly see they're already prepping for Survivor Series with this booking decision right here. Oh like, yeah, make Asuka answer the answer the call because, you know, they'll be battling it out at Survivor Series. So go ahead and get that booked out of the way. I mean, it'd be a damn good banger anyway, but we're getting it here tonight. Anyways, the match only goes like three minutes and then they spill to the outside. Bailey hits Asuka with a chair, forcing the disqualification. I don't even know if the title was on the line or not. I don't know if it was just an impromptu match. I guess it was, it might have been both. But out of nowhere, here comes the boss. The boss, Sasha Banks, shows up. She beats the hell out of Bailey, she's going back and forth. She's got a neck brace on. She's been on the shelf for just a second. She comes back, attacks Bailey. Clearly, you know, we're gonna get the prolonged feud. We've been waiting on it forever now. It seems like they were a team. They were a team. There, I feel like this thing's been booking itself for like three and three and a half years right now. But Sasha Banks returns, beats up Bailey, and Bailey retreats up the ramp. So we're already booking for Survivor Series with Asuka and Bailey, and then of course the prolonged feud in the future will be Sasha and Bailey. I'm guessing Sasha is probably gonna win the Royal Rumble if I had to guess, but. That was our matchup. We didn't have a matchup. It was just pretty much storytelling for this one. Next up, guys, was the WWE Championship Ambulance match between Drew McIntyre taking on Randy Orton. And I swear to God, they had this matchup just to promote the sale of the Slambulance. I swear, man, the doors got ripped off. We had a bunch of different spots going on. I actually, this was a really good and entertaining matchup. I had a lot of fun during this matchup. I thought that, you know, the story was there. I love how they brought back some guys. So we picked up the pace, like, immediately. Like, they were going at it, hitting big moves on each other other right off the gate. They they went around the arena. They were fighting all over the arena. Big Show interfered in this thing. Put Randy Orton through the announce table. Christian interfered in this thing. He uh, took out Randy Orton and threw him through some catering tables. We got to see HBK in this matchup. He hit a sweet chin music on Randy Orton and Randy Orton right off the top of the ambulance at one point. Randy Orton evaded a Claymore kick and Drew McIntyre Claymore the, one of the doors of the ambulance off. So pretty much all of the victims of Randy Orton's you know evil things that he has been doing over the last few months. Came back to haunt him in this matchup as Big Show Christian and HBK get involved in this match. And after the matchup, when Drew McIntyre finally got the victory, he did win. WWE Champion does retain here. He puts Randy Orton in the back of the ambulance and then Ric Flair, of all people, drives the ambulance out of the arena. So maybe this is riding Randy Orton off TV for a while. That's at least what it looks like. Maybe he returns to the Royal Rumble. I think that's a pretty good shot there. I'm imagining Ro Randy Orton will probably come in at like 25th and then the number 30 the entrant will probably be Edge returning from injury. That's what I'm going to go with. I don't know if he's going to win. Maybe they eliminate each other, setting up the WrestleMania match, the third and, fin uh, you know, the final match for their little trifecta. But Drew McIntyre even punted Randy Orton in this matchup. Lots of great drama. Lots of good filmography in this matchup. Just a really fun match, man. I, I highly recommend it. We had a brutal, like, windshield spot in this match. It was just a lot of fun, man. You definitely want to go back and check this thing out if you guys missed it. Super fun stuff. Couldn't recommend it enough. But Drew McIntyre does return the WWE Championship. I do agree with it. I don't have any problems with this thing. I had a lot of fun with it, and I'm hoping to see. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm actually excited to see where we go from here. I, I love Drew as champion. I would have been fine with Randy winning, but I think Drew makes the most sense. I still think he's going to hold it until we get back to a live crowd. So, with that being said, guys, you got to take Randy Orton. You got to open up the back of the ambulance here, and you just got to throw him in there and slam the door and whoop, whoop. Get his ass out of here, Brad, because I think that's going to write Randy Orton off. Drew McIntyre, still your WWE champion, and I agree with this sentiment. And for our main event, guys, we had the Blue Universal Championship match. The big dog, Roman Reigns, defending his Universal Championship with Paul Heyman in his corner against his Us, his brother, his family. Jay Uso coming up, one half of the Usos battling it out here. This matchup was great. You know, it started off exactly how I thought that it should have been booked. I said that Roman Reigns should dominate this thing. He came out. He no longer rocks the vest. He no longer rocks the vest anymore. So let's go ahead and just let's go ahead and just take this ish off because he doesn't rock the vest no more. Even though I'm gonna make a new fix up, I still wanna I wanna go ahead and take care of this because he he doesn't wear it. All right, he doesn't wear. It. He was looking good out there. He's got the new tat going down his back. He looks like a million bucks. He looks good. Looks terrific. I think he's supposed to debut new music very soon. I thought it was gonna be tonight. I guess it wasn't. And there we go. So it, this was hard hitting, bro. I, I mean they they went into each other. I thought this was great storytelling. This was masterful. If you guys missed this, you definitely got to go check it out. But Roman Reigns is basically saying you're going 
acknowledge me as the head of the family table. I run this. I'm the chief. You're second fiddle to me. I'm at the top of the totem pole. This is my family. I'm the leader. And basically, you know, Jay was like, no, nah, Oos, no, 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 I'm gonna get this thing. And they were battling it out, beating the hell out of each other. Some good back and forth. You know, Roman was dominant at first, is which I liked. I liked him dominating, but then it flipped on its head. Jay got a lot of impact coming back. So towards the end of this matchup, Roman starts depleting Jay. You can see that Jay's running out of gas. And Roman is just pounding Jay Uso, bro. He is just beating the hell out of him and getting back into that dominant side that I said that he should have had in the first place. Like, this is how it should be booked. He should dominate. So he's on top of him. He's beating the hell out of him, beating the hell out of him, hitting him with spears. And he's like, you're going to acknowledge me, bro. You're going to acknowledge me as the head of the table. I'm the chief. And he's beating the hell out of him. And Jay just refuses to do so. So out, out of nowhere, here comes Jimmy. So in comes Jimmy. And Jimmy is at ringside. And, you know, he's like, I got, he has a white towel. And he's like, I'm throwing this shit in, Oos. I'm throwing this in. We got to throw in the towel. You're getting the hell beat out of you. This is sickening. I can't take this. Just acknowledge it, bro. Just acknowledge. Jay's like, no, nah, Oos, I'm not going to do it. And Jimmy's like begging him. You can see it on his face. He doesn't want to do it, but he doesn't want his brother to get his ass beat anymore. Roman continues to beat the hell out of Jay. Very powerful stuff, man. I love this. This was this was excellent stuff. This is good. This is how you write something. This is how you write it, and this is how you book something. This is how you make something impactful. I was invested in it. They did a fantastic job. Shout out to WWE Creative. That was, that was brilliant. All of it's brilliant. I can't wait to see where we go from here. But finally, Jimmy throws in the towel because he can't take it anymore. Jimmy gets in there and braces Jay, and he, you know, he pushes Roman off, and he's, what the hell's the matter with you, Oos? We're family, and he's like hugging on Jay because Jay's beat the hell out of him. I think some a bloody mess Jay would have really sent the message with maybe some blood on Roman's chest, you know, from beating the hell out of him. But they crown Roman. The match gets thrown out. Roman retains, and I don't know, bro. This was excellent. Good football, man. Good football. That's how you book it. That was just, that was, that was immaculate. I love that. But man, that pretty much does it for your Clash of Champions review, man. I can't wait to see where we go from here. I love the heel Roman. I think they should just merge together now, man. Take the Usos, put them with Roman and Paul Heyman. Have the bloodline and have your MDT going, man. I mean, it looks like MDT live over there right now. Put them all together, form the bloodline, and run rampant. That's how I book it and beat the hell out of Retribution and everybody. F it. Have Retribution versus the bloodline at, at Survivor Series. I don't know. But that pretty much does it for my Clash of Champions review. Overall, you know, we had some good stuff here and there. We had some great stuff here and there, but not everything was great. I thought the Raw Tag Team Championship match, after going back and looking at it, I was, I don't know what the hell that was. Women's Championship match was eh. Zelina Vega match was eh. I love the SmackDown Tag Team Championship. I love the Intercontinental Championship ladder match. I love the ambulance match, and I love this. So overall, pretty solid show, man. I actually enjoyed it. Found myself entertained. Not everything was perfect by any means, but the good parts were great, and the bad parts were not great. So I don't know. Take with that what you will, but I'm getting the hell out of here, guys. Thank you so very much for watching. Look forward to a surgery video coming in the next couple days. Vindication should be posted up by Thursday, so that's something to look forward to. But I'm getting out of here, guys. Thank you so very much for watching. Subscribe to the channel. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at MyDamnToys, and I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you.